Adi Hanish and I worked with the online team at General Assembly to develop our remote programs. Taking a live online class is a strange, weird, exciting, exhilarating feeling. It's a highly interactive and engaging experience that has been built to facilitate the communal learning experience you'd get from attending class at any one of our campuses. In every lesson, you'll work with your instructors and classmates in real time and work through activities and exercises to constantly apply what you're learning. Our philosophy in our remote courses is that you don't learn by listening, you learn by doing. Let's take a look at the platforms and setup you'll be using in the remote class to make sure you're ready to dive in on day one. In order to provide the type of interaction and engagement that's comparable to what you'd see on campus at General Assembly, we depend on several platforms. The first is Zoom. Zoom is our video conferencing platform. It allows all participants, students, and instructors to be on camera and microphone. Everyone in the class can see and interact with each other. Zoom has a host of additional features, including screen sharing, whiteboarding, and breakout rooms for pair and group projects that'll help you work with your instructors and classmates more easily. Also, your instructor will record your lessons on Zoom and provide you a link to those recordings so you can revisit the lessons later if you need to. The next platform is Slack. Slack is a robust communication and messaging tool. It is the backbone of the online classroom. In your class Slack channel, you'll see all the lesson information. At the start of every class, your instructor will provide the link to join the Zoom meeting, the agenda for the lesson, and any additional slides, links, and content. Slack also keeps a great archive of the entire course so that you can go back and revisit concepts from previous lessons. Through Slack, you can communicate with your instructors, your entire class through the Slack channel, and individuals or small groups through direct messaging. You can share images, GIFs, files, and links as well. Slack allows you the ability to respond to questions from your instructor or to ask your own questions during the lesson. When your instructor drops in steps or activities, you can respond to the step with a thumbs up emoji to indicate you're done and ready to move on. When you're put into small groups, you can create new channels or group messages through Slack so you can collaborate more effectively with your teammates. With Zoom and Slack, you'll have a myriad of ways to communicate and collaborate with your fellow classmates and instructors. So much of managing your remote experience is successfully managing your screen real estate. An external monitor is required only for remote immersive students. If you're a student in a part-time or one-week course, an external monitor can be really helpful, but won't be required. If you're using an external monitor, use this setup. On your primary monitor, have Slack open full screen. This way you can follow along with your instructor's lesson in the class Slack channel and easily interact with your instructors and classmates. On your external monitor, have Zoom on the left third of the monitor. On the other side of the external monitor, have your browser window, notes, and any other necessary applications open. If you're using a single monitor setup, do it this way. Again, put Zoom on the left third of the screen. On the right side, put Slack. If you need to have additional windows or apps open, cascade them behind Slack to make it easier to switch among them. With this introduction to the remote platforms and how to set up your monitor, you're ready to jump into your first remote lesson. Good luck.